So in our last video, we, uh, we came up with some exponent identities. And uh, in this video, what I want to do is I want to use these identities, make a slight alteration to one of them, and then also come up with some more identities that are going to help us manipulate exponents a little better. So let's start. Uh, let's, look at, uh, let's look at this problem. x over 2, sorry, x to the second over x to the seventh. What is that? Well, now we have a rule here, an identity that tells us that when, hip, when we have x to the a over x to the b, that, that equals x to the a minus b when a is bigger than b, which is not the case here, or it equals 1 over x to the b minus a when b is bigger than a. That is the case here. And so, uh, uh, I'm going to stick with what we have here, except I'm going to make a slight change, and that is, I'm just going to get rid of this stuff. I'm going to say it equals both of them. Okay? And what that means is that this equals x to the negative 5, because that's 2 minus 7, and it also equals 1 over x to the 5th. Okay? Now, in the past, we've only thought of exponents as being positive whole numbers. Uh, and the reason for that is that there's a, there's a definition for exponents. It's the number of times that you multiply something by itself. And um, when you talk about x being to a negative number, that definition doesn't really make sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand our definition of what an exponent is. And so we're going to expand the definition using this identity here, using this rule. So we're going to say, when we have x to a negative power, it's the reciprocal of x to that corresponding positive power. And so I'm going to write this as x to the negative a power equals 1 over x to the a. Okay? And this is consistent, consistent with what we have here, because b minus a really is negative a minus b. If you distribute that negative, you'll find that you get negative a plus b, which is b minus a. So this is consistent with what we have right here. Okay, uh, let's look at another problem. We have 3x to the 6th, y to the 2nd, over 9x to the 4th, y to the 4th. Okay, now, uh, this one looks a little daunting just because it's got so much stuff going on in it, but it's really not that difficult. And one of the things that I think is, uh, that I like to do with these problems that I think helps me out a bit is I like to separate this like so. And I'm going to say this equals 3 ninths times x to the 6th over x to the 4th times y to the 2nd over y to the 4th. And if I do it that way, it, it just simplifies things for me. 3 ninths, I know what that is. That's 1 third. x to the 6 divided by x to the 4th, well, that's uh, x to the 6 minus 4, so that's x squared. And y to the 2nd over y to the 4th, that's y to the 2 minus 4, that's y to the negative 2. And I'm going to go ahead and do it this way and say that's 1 over y squared. And uh, then if I just look at this and say, well, shoot, uh, I can just put that over 1. That tells me what I have. It's 1 times x squared times 1. It's going to be x squared in my numerator. And 3 times 1 times y squared. 3y squared in the denominator. It is generally, it is, uh, it's customary to leave your answers with positive exponents, not negative exponents. So, like in this first problem that we had here, even though this does equal ne x to the negative fifth, um, generally when we write our answers, we go ahead and, and uh, write the reciprocal of that. Uh, well, I'm sorry, it's not the reciprocal. We write 1 over x to the fifth uh, because, like I said earlier, people tend to understand positive exponents better than they do negative exponents. Uh, next problem. This one looks very easy. And it, and it is, but it gives us an important uh, result, and that is 
Well, x to the 2 over x to the 2, that's just going to be x to the 2 of 2 minus 2, which is uh, 0, right? But we also have something divided by itself. Something divided by itself is always 1, unless it's 0 divided by itself, and then it's not defined. And so what we find here is that x to the 0 power, no matter what x is, is always going to be 1, another good identity to have here. And I do want to mention that, just like I said here a second ago, this is true when x is not 0. So we need to include that. Okay. Um, let's try this one. Let's try x squared times y cubed to the fourth power. What's this? Well, um, when I take something to the fourth power, I x squared times y cubed times x squared times y cubed times x squared times y cubed times x squared times y cubed. One, two, three, four. Yep, I did that right. And this is just going to be x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared, which is x to the eighth power times y cubed times y cubed times y cubed times y cubed, which is y to the twelfth power. And I think most of y'all probably could have gotten this anyway, uh, because you're looking at this and you're saying, well, you know, according to this identity right here, x to the a to the b power is x to the a times b power, and so you just do 2 times 4 is 8, and 3 times 4 is 12. Except I want you to notice that what we end up doing, in effect, is really distributing this exponent to these two factors here. We have x squared to the fourth times y cubed to the fourth. And so this, this exponent here applies to both of the factors that we have inside those parentheses. And that's really the, uh, the point that I wanted to make, is that when you have a product to a power, that that is equal to each of those factors to that power, x to the a times y to the a. All right, let's do one more problem. Let's do 2 times z squared over y cubed, and I'm going to take this whole thing to the negative third power. Okay. <clears throat> now this looks kind of messy. And, uh... I guess the part that's messing with my head the most is this negative third power here. Now let me look back over here. x to the negative a is 1 over x to the a. That is, x to the negative power is just the reciprocal of x to that corresponding positive power. So what I can do then is I can just take the reciprocal of this to the third power. Well, I know what the reciprocal of a fraction is. You just flip that fraction over. So it's going to be that to the third power. And now what I do is, I say, well, I'm going to use what I have here, and I'm going to say, I'm just going to uh, take this uh, exponent right here, and I'm going to distribute it here, and here and here. So now that's going to give me y cubed, sorry, that's kind of messy looking, y cubed cubed, which is y to the ninth, over 2 cubed, which is 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8, times z squared cubed, and that's z to the sixth, and we are done with that one.